Scola Cantorum, Scola is school, Cantorum is sing, singing, so it's a song school. And the Scola Cantorum was set up, or the plural Scola Cantore, was set up in about the year 600. Uh, the, the Pope at the time, Gregory the Great, and that's where we get the term Gregorian, it's from him, he, he decided that the chant that was learnt in Rome, he needed to spread that throughout Europe. And so he, he started these little schools of chant, Scola Cantorum, Scola Cantore. Quite often than not, they would go to other countries, say France, and they would pick up what the French were doing, and then they would bring that back to Rome. So this cross-fertilisation of chant styles, like the city of Milan had its own, and it was called Ambrosian chant. We had chant uh, from the Celtic world, a Celtic chant. We had chant from the French world and Ita Italy. So there were different flavors, different styles, but ultimately it was Rome liked the idea of having a uniformity across Europe. I don't know whether you've ever seen the movie In the Name of the Rose, but uh, it's a wonderful scene where uh, these monks come in. There are already monks in that abbey singing and these visiting monks come in plonk themselves in the choir pews and just join them. They just knew it by heart. And so when we sing night office, today it happens, it's mostly in darkness with one or two candles. They just know everything by heart. The other thing to notice about Gregorian chant, it was so well known in the Middle Ages, it was like our pop music now. And they actually used to even date events. So they might say in the year 1250, um, at the singing of a particular song, and everyone knew this was Easter, this event happened. So they actually used a particular chant, say for Easter Sunday, the Victime Pascale, as a marker of time. Gregorian chant is quite often sung, everyone singing the same melody. Um, it, it's not necessarily, you wouldn't say it's like four parts, it's not like four part harmony. We can sing that, but what we do with Gregorian chant is we introduce a couple of things. Uh, we can have an ison, now that's a sustaining note that's often sung by the men, but it can be sung by, say, the women with the men singing. Uh, the Eastern churches call it this, an ison. Sometimes people call it a drone. I prefer the term ison, which means one sound. So we have uh, three or four singers singing this one sound, and that's like a, an organ chord. We can actually have that in two or three parts. So it's quite a beautiful harmony. And then others will be singing the melody. In, in the Orthodox churches, in the Eastern churches, they might have five singing melody and ten on the sustaining notes underneath. Their custom is not to have an organ. That, that's a Western custom. So in a sense, this is like an organ underlay that they do. So we adopt that ison. Uh, we also sing in organum, perhaps at the end of a chant, and you have people going into fourths or fifths. So singing in parallel in fourths or fifths. It's a very medieval sound. That's like the ancient harmony. From that developed like your four-part harmony, you know, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So really, in its, in its raw state, everyone sings the same notes in chant, but you can enrich it, you, you can give it more dynamics by adding things like eson, the sustaining note, or organum.